Ladies and gentlemen, you've been hearing the promos all week long, talking about the handicapping show uh, tonight at 6.30. Uh, our guest and Doug Knackman will bring you uh, more of the Belmont Stakes, but there's a certain pep in his step anytime he thinks that he can possibly be witness to another Triple Crown. Good, late, good morning, Jay Randolph. Welcome back to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you, McGraw. Good morning to you and yours. You betcha. How excited are you over tomorrow? Well, excited, certainly. Uh, you know, it's uh, 36 years since we had a Triple Crown winner. We might have one tomorrow afternoon. And uh, let's hope that uh, this horse, uh, American Pharaoh, who has won the first two legs of the Triple Crown this year, is good enough to get the job done. I don't know what Doug is going to tell us tonight on the seminar, what his thoughts are. He'll be trying to find a way to make some money on the race. But, uh, of course, uh, the outstanding, overwhelming favorite will be uh, American Pharaoh at about uh, probably 2 to 5, 3 to 5 tomorrow. But uh, there are eight horses going to the post, and uh, a lot of people have been asking me all week long who I liked, and I said I really don't know because I don't. Uh, I, I, like, I like American Pharaoh because I'm rooting for this horse, and uh, is a wonderful trainer, Bob Baffert, to, to win the Triple Crown. It would be terrific for thoroughbred racing, and uh, we'd have a, a new star on the horizon for a while, but it's a tough assignment. That's why it hasn't happened in 36 years. Well, a not three-year-old... Uh, running three races in seven weeks and winning all three, it doesn't doesn't happen very often. Not only does it not happen very often, but we've had a stretch here of a lot of horses winning the first two and then just just dying in that stretch coming down the back. Yeah, Big Brown last year couldn't get it done. Tonalist, who Doug picked last year, uh, uh, won. And uh, the year before, Doug has selected the winner, Palace Malice. He's had the winners in the last two Belmont Stakes. And uh, maybe the third time is the charm for him this evening. We'll find out who he likes. But at the same time, uh, this is a very interesting race because you're asking these three-year-olds to run a mile and a half. None of them have ever run that far before. And uh, it's it's just, to me, uh, one of the most exciting two and a half minutes in sports. And uh, it will be really something special if this horse can get the job done. Well, you think about that. What's the world record for the mile? Three minutes and 50 seconds or something for a human? <laughs> and this horse yeah. runs a mile and a half in two and a half minutes. Think about that well, for I, a second. If I, yeah, if I remember correctly, I think Secretariat still holds the record uh, for a mile and a half uh, when uh, Secretariat won the Belmont by 37 seven lengths. <laughs> <laughs> but a remarkable horse. But th this this is really, uh, uh, there are a lot of people who have thought we ought to change the, the rules a little bit, uh, lengthen out the races a little longer, give the horses more rest and everything else. But it is tradition to run the Triple Crown this way, and uh, we'll see if somebody can get it done again this year. It's, it's the hardest thing to do in sports. There's no question about it. How good, though, is this American Pharaoh in terms of other great horses that have come down. He might win the uh, the Triple Crown in a down year. It seems like there have been some great horses that have come through, Jay Randolph, that, that, that have gotten beat in this Triple Crown. Well, there's no question about that. And uh, I would say this to you. Uh, this horse has been extremely impressive in races that uh, he has run over wet ground, over sloppy ground. Mm. If it would rain tomorrow in New York, and I understand there's about a 20% chance of showers. Uh, it would really move this horse up even more than the, the current odds of 3 to 5. But if the racetrack is fast, this is a sandy loam track, uh, a little deeper than either one of the tracks that uh, they've run on so far, Churchill and Pimlico. And you don't know how this horse is going to run. He's never run over this racetrack. He's worked over it a couple of days, just jogged over it. But you, you have no real thought on, on how he's going to like the racetrack. And that's been a factor in the past for some horses. Yeah. They just didn't take to the track. Uh, there shouldn't be uh, any real problems traffic-wise 
uh, American Pharaoh is uh, breaking from the five position. And with only eight horses in the race and with a mile and a half to get things sorted out, McGraw, it, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Let's hope it's not. And, and let's hope it's a terrific race. And uh, I say let's hope this horse can get the job done. It would be a terrific uh, uh, way to end the Triple Crown this year after a long, long drought. Jay Randolph, you are on tonight at 6.30 with the picks. And hopefully there's some uh, money out there to be made tomorrow for some people. Well, hopefully that's the case, and of course, uh, you can watch and wager on uh, the simulcast from Belmont tomorrow at Fairmont Park, and then if they want to have a full day, they can stay over and have dinner at Fairmont and bet the Fairmont races tomorrow night, so for the horse racing fans, a big day. You got it. Jay Randolph, we'll tune in tonight, 6, 6.30 for the show. Thanks for being so nice to us over the years. Thank you. You got it. Jay Randolph, one of the greats. And a horse racing legend. And uh, love to see that triple crown. So we'll see what happens. 6.30 tonight. Tune in and find out who they're picking. St. Louis Plaza Company Traffic Center. Here's Frank Lash.